this is a video about the Boss GT1000 multi effects, which I bought a month or so ago, maybe two months ago, I can't remember now. Um, and mainly to replace my main pedal board, which you can see I did an overview of a couple of years ago now. This is going to be a violin based video because I'm not a guitarist, so do not expect me to just discuss amplifier simulators, cab simulators or even very much about distortions. This is about how I use it as a violinist, how it replaces my main pedal board and the things I want to do with it. So if you want to hear about amp sims, you can switch off now. I don't need the hits that much, so bye. If you're still here, I'll show you. This is the main board now is just three pedals, which is quite something after sort of 15 or so I used to have. The GT1000 sits in the middle, and is the main effects provider basically. On the right here we have the SY300 guitar synth which I discussed uh, at length on two videos beforehand. That does all sorts of effects as well as the guitar synth stuff. It does drones, it can do the drum machine, sort of really useful pedal. And on the other side here I have the Pictronix Infinity Looper, which I really love. I got that fairly recently to replace the Vox. And while it doesn't have all the facilities of the Vox, it's much nicer in so many ways. And also I can do some of the, the post effects which you could do with the Vox, you can now do on the GT1000, which I will show you either this time or next time. I'm going to try and make this video not, not as long as the last one, because I do tend to ramble a bit. So in general, I really like the pedal, it's very very flexible of course, you've got all the soft remapping of things, rewiring on the fly, it's got lots and lots of different effects in there that I need. It also has some of the wilder effects which I didn't expect to find in a multi-effects pedal, I expected to do the bread and butter stuff, you know, delays, reverbs, pitch shifting, all that sort of thing, but actually it's got some quite nice fancy reverbs and really wacky delays in there that are I, I like and they're good, they're good fun. You don't use them a lot, but it's nice that they're there and you don't need to plug another pedal in to do it. I like the fact that it has two sends. That's a big thing for me. Oh, one of the things that's really sold it to me amongst a lot of other features. If you can see there, I've got the SY300 as one send and I've got the Looper, the Victronic Infinity Looper as another send so that I can move those anywhere I like within the, um, within the effects chain. I find that very powerful. So I can have effects on the loop, I can have the drones running on the SY300 separately from all the other effects. Very powerful system. I also have the SY300 MIDI synced to the GT1000. The SY300 provides the clock and the tap tempo and the SY300 is always synced to that. So effectively what I have is every particular track that we play I have a preset on the SY300 that has the BPM built into it and it automatically clocks all the delays, all the reverbs, everything in the GT1000 automatically. So I actually very rarely even use tap tempo anymore. It's all preset for me. This saves a lot of hassle. It's very nice, very helpful. I don't use the built-in looper on the GT1000 very much, hardly at all in fact. I used it on the demo that I did a few weeks ago but that was merely just to show what I could do with just the one pedal. I generally prefer the flexibility of the Pictronix Infinity Looper. It's got a lot more things on it that I like. It's got reverse, it's got fade, which I particularly use, I use a lot of fade on stop and things like that. So I find that much better. And it's also got two loops which can be synchronised or not synchronised. They can be MIDI synchronised if needed. It just does a lot more um, things that I need. So there's a looper built into GT1000. If all you want is a basic phrase repeater, I'm sure it's great. But any of those, fe any one of those features, I think, would be nice to add to the GT1000 if Roland are listening, which they'll certainly not. That would be a nice thing to add. So, yeah. This is my basic sort of patch that I use with Helicopter Quartet for most of the time. You can see it nicely displays the uh, effects on the top there. This is what all the buttons do. They all nicely light up different colours, so I know what they're doing when they're on. The effects loop is actually quite simple on this particular chain. There's uh, two EQs there. There's the pitch shifter. More of which will later reverb at the end. 
and various delays in different places. Um, it's quite simple. There's, there's a bottom to bottom link there. It's not doing anything. I'll show you why that's there in a minute. It's basically emulating my old pedal board. So I've got to start off so I can play the old tracks and I know where things are. Even the position of the, dist the effects on the, on the uh, display is very similar to where they were on my actual board. The parallel one is slightly different where this one works. The SY300 is in a send and it's separate from all the main set of effects there. And this thing switches that line on and off. You'll notice it doesn't switch the top one off, it just switches the bottom one on. So it allows me to do normal playing while still sending drones from the SY300, which is what it's generally used for in this configuration. So send the one there is the SY300, send two is the looper, which is set before the reverb. Always very useful. That's something I couldn't really do with the old pedal board without having a separate reverb pedal, which would just be a lot more hassle of plugging things in. So a few little things. Um, Having a, there, it has these things called FX types there, where you, there's where you set pitch shifts, ring modulators, rotary, all sorts of fancy things, all the things you'd buy pedals for. You've only got three of those, and that seems slightly paltry at first. In fact, because you can seamlessly switch between patches on this, it's less of a problem than it sounds. Also, you can actually use pedals here to switch what type of effect there are. So this button here just changes the range of the pitch shifter, for instance from octave to fifths, more of which later. But you can actually change the type, I think you can change it from a pitch shifter to a ring mod or something, with the touch of a pedal. So you can do things like that. So that actually works better than you think it's going to do, or than I thought it was going to do. The stomp box feature is fabulous. Use it. Particularly if you're switching between patches. It's a great way of making sure that they're all the same. So I've got one here, that's EQ1, stomp box EQ1. So every time I've got an EQ1 in any other patch, it comes up the same. If I change it on this one, it changes on all of them. It's great. Quick tip, always set your stomp box up first before you start changing the type and the various parameters of it. Because as soon as you change it, all the effect parameters change again. So if you've got one nicely set up, you can't then suddenly make it into a stomp box. You have to remember what the settings are, and then go back and reset them once you've put the stomp box number in there. So if you're going to do a stomp box, try and remember that's what you're doing before you change the parameters. I've fallen foul of that one quite a few times. One of the things you can do, and I've not played with this as much as I'd like, but it does seem to work quite well, is you can change paths, if you've got two paths here for effects, you can change these dynamically and you can specify how loud you play before it switches between the paths and there can be a crossover in that as well so you, it'll it'll send the signal down both paths for some values. That works actually very well, particularly with a violin where you can change how hard you push the string with the bow. So you can actually bow it really hard and put some bass in there, bow it softer, put a bit more treble in there or a bit more delay. I need to play more with that. I think it works quite well. Things I don't like are well, small, small beefs I have with it. I think the knobs here are less useful than I would like these here. For a start, they only display one line of the effect. So I've got effect level there. What is that? I can't even remember what that is. I literally can't remember what that is. I think it might be the delay, it might be the reverb. I'm not sure. It would be really useful if it showed you more detail. Also, those are not per patch, they're global, so they're always the same. Regardless of what patch you're on, the knobs do the same thing. So they're better off when they're assigned to stomp boxes, perhaps, where you have a consistent parameter set. So it'd be nice if those could be reassigned per patch. I hope that there might be a future firmware update. We'll see. So I, I use those a lot less than I thought I would. There's a thing in the... I think it's called int pedal, and I'm really not sure how useful it is. I'm not even going to show you it because I can't figure out a use for it. It's it's a thing that Verilland have had on all their old multi effects going all the way back to at least GT3. So I suppose they put it there for compatibility, and maybe people have uses for it. I suppose I didn't, I couldn't figure out what it was for particularly. Maybe just that's the way I use it. Any ideas? Please put them in the comments. 
I think what I wanted more than anything was something like the SY300, which allows me to fade in and fade out effects, which I think is really nice. Now, the GT1000 can't do that, which is a bit of a disappointment. I think I hoped the int pedal would do that when I read the documentation, but it doesn't. It just fades in an effect, but you can't fade it out again. And But it only fades it in, even when you press the button again, it just fades it in again. It's bizarre. My biggest beef with this is the pitch shifter. The pitch shifters are terrible. They're awful. I find it hard to believe that Roland, who makes the PS5 and the PS6, which are two of the best pitch shifter pedals on the market, have put this in the GT1000. They're just terrible. Um, they work fine for octave down, but there's already an octave effect anyway. So you might as well use that. So that was the octave pitch shifter, and that's fine. This is the fifth. Artifact on it. The higher up you get, the worse it gets. Compare that with the PS5, which is absolutely fine. I make it draw fast. It's just horrible. So, unusable, apart from the octave. If I want to do pitch shifting, I have to go to the SY300 there, and I've set up an octave uh, for shifter on those using the oscillators. Because the SY300, being a synth, doesn't have a pitch shifter, but it does have oscillators that you can pitch relative to the detected pitch of the instrument. So, that's bizarre. Um, I hope they can fix that. It would be nice. One nice thing is that on the distortions there is an option for a dry, something I've been wanting for ages and is on very, very few actual distortion pedals. So if I have a distortion on there, it actually sounds quite nice on the violin because there's some dry in there. It still sounds a bit like a violin, not just like a guitar. On the old pedal board I had the MD2 Mega Distortion, which you can actually do with this, it's quite nice. quite surprised how well you could do that with a bit of effort. So yeah, the distortions are good and I suppose it's a guitarist's pedal, these people like that sort of stuff. I don't use distortions a lot but it's nice to know that they're there. Neither mine are beef and it's not a particular problem to be honest. It comes with a Bluetooth app which they tout quite nicely on the website. So you can set things up on your phone. In practice, it's just way too slow to get set up. It's a pain to get it going, so you can just not even finding it now. And when it's running, it's just really slow. So I found that useless, to be honest. It's on my phone, but I don't use it. My other beef is drivers. It needs drivers to sort MIDI. Why? Just make it stop, Roland. Stop being idiots. But in general, it's good. It's saved me a lot of weight. It's given me a lot of flexibility. I can do a whole gig now with three pedals, which is really nice. 
hasn't saved me a lot in setting up time. In fact, it's probably taken slightly longer to set up because all the pedals are all in effects loops rather than just plugged straight into each other in a chain. But generally, I think it's a price worth paying. If they fits the pitch shifter, I would be very, very happy with it. As it is, I'm just happy with it.